Alright, so in this video, let's take a look at a way that we can freehand sculpt a tileable sculpt <laughs> that we can use to create tileable alphas. Um, we're mainly going to be looking at the brush wrap feature, but we're also going to take a look at a custom setup that's going to allow us um, pretty easy access to the tiling area, and it's going to we're going to use selective subdivision in order to get the resolution where we need it. So let's dive in first with the brush wrap basics. So I'll create just a regular 3D plane here. Go ahead and make it a poly mesh. I'll turn smooth off, divide it just a handful of times. And if we go into our brush curve palette here, then we can turn wrap mode to one. Now with just the standard brush active, as I start to pull my stroke off the right side of the plane, that stroke gets continued over to the left. Same thing for the top and the bottom, left and right. So, and it's not mirroring, it's essentially continuing that stroke, almost as if this side of the plane existed here, and I was just continuing that stroke. But there's a few issues with this, and that's, as you can see, as I start to build up this stroke, um, I'm starting to lose my straight edge here when we compare it to this uh, vertical line here of the canvas. So if I were to try to hit F and frame my plane now in order to alpha grab dock and get my tiling alpha, we'd have these seams here. And if I were to continue to sculpt and and inflate or use alphas to, to build this plane up, this, this edge would get even wavier. Um, so we're going to want to figure out a way that we can avoid any waviness and get really nice clean tiling results. Well, one way is to simply set this to wrap mode 2. And you'll notice now that just the center part of this plane becomes the uh, sculpting area. That that stroke is essentially carried all the way through um, multiple times. So, you know, what I could essentially do is then just zoom in on this part of the plane and alpha grab dock that. But there's a couple of issues with that. One is, well, how do I know exactly where to zoom into in order to get my tileable alpha. But there's a few ways that we could, you know, easily get to this area. But there's another issue and that's the issue of resolution. Where if I wanted a one million polygon plane in order to get a really high res sculpt, uh, I would actually need many more millions because I, in order to get one million polygons here, I'd have to subdivide it so that it's, what, nine million? So, and that's not the most efficient way to work. So, what we can do, let me clear that, and I'll bring up a tool that I've already got saved. And this came out of Maya but you could make one in any of your digital content creation apps. Um, but there's a few things I'll point out about it. And when we start to talk about wrap mode, it's a good time to start talking about ZBrush Unified Space. And what that is, is essentially like the optimized space in which ZBrush does a lot of operations. Um, and how it relates to the wrap mode is that if we go back to our, our, our plane here, right? Uh, this plane by default is inside the unified space. Um, and if we go ahead to the deformation palette and we size it up outside of that space. Now I've set wrap mode back to one, but you'll notice that as I start sculpting, that stroke isn't just carried across from one edge to the other. Um, it's, it's really tiling across the unified space, which is uh, negative 100 to 0 to 100. 
So it's not based off of the edge of the model. It's actually based off of the unified space. So with that in mind, let's go back and take a look at our custom plane here. Now, <clears throat> if I just start subdividing it a bunch just to get some divisions to sculpt on, you'll notice that with the wrap mode set to 1, it's tiled multiple times across the surface. Now that's there because essentially this inner square is the ZBrush unified space. Now in Maya, that's going to be uh, a plane with a scale of 2, which would go from negative 1 to 0 in the center to 1 along the x-axis. So that becomes really important because if you set a plane to a scale of 6 and then you divide it the way that I have and then extrude those edges back a little bit and you notice I've already turned those faces into poly groups and I've gone ahead and creased them then what you end up with is you end up with just this inside square that represents the ZBrush unified space so what that means is with a wrap mode of one set if we keep dividing this this becomes the section of our tileable sculpt just this inner square. So just to finish this off so that it it's becomes a sculptable tool for us to create these tileable sculpts, I'm going to go ahead and just use my select rect and I'm just going to go ahead and grab just these inner boxes here. And if I just control D to divide that, I can selectively subdivide. And then I can keep doing that multiple times so now what I'm doing is I'm starting to focus all of my subdivision resolution toward the center of this this larger plane which again happens to be the ZBrush unified space because that's how I set it up in Maya. So I can do that a handful of times and then um, my creasing is still there. Now if I go ahead and make sure my smooth is back on, I can turn polyframe off, I can divide it so that it's, you know, we'll go up to a million. So now if I start kind of somewhere in the center here and, you know, I can start making my designs and it should be completely tileable. And all the resolution is focused right into the center of the unified space here, or the center of the plane but the stroke is still continued. Now, once we complete our sculpt, there's still the issue of, well, now how do we zoom in and grab dark our alpha? So, I've actually got a subtool already prepared oops, that happens to be the plane that's inside the ZBrush unified space. So again, if you were importing from Maya, uh, for those of you working in centimeters, it would be a plane with a scale of 2. And then I'm just going to turn my top subtool back on. And now, if I say alpha, grab doc, uh, this should be a completely tileable alpha. And of course, we can test that just by going to our subtool here. And I'll just go ahead and divide it a bunch and I can just go ahead and quickly tile my alpha. I've got it down here in my custom UI, but this would be in your, your alpha palette. And I can just say masking, mask by alpha, and it looks pretty good at this res. I might actually want to clear that and maybe divide it one more time, mask by alpha, and then I can just inflate and clear that mask. And you'll see now we've got a nice tiling pattern. Um, and we got it all fairly easily from this plane. So with a custom setup like this, a custom plane, you can use selective subdivisions and a wrap mode of one uh, because remember our unified space is, is just the center of this sculptable plane. And uh, you can you can get some pretty nice, tileable results efficiently. Hope you enjoyed.